Okay, cool. Um, so uh, today I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, our recent project in uh, smart contract security, namely Oriente making smart contracts smarter. This is the joint project uh, with uh, my team from NUS and Yale and US College. Um, so Okay, uh, so we all know that programming security is hard because, uh, especially for you know complex program, because your system or your program may have you know multiple components, and the adversary or the the attacker can choose you know to attack you know any component and to exploit your system. Uh, so that's why you know people say uh, security can be no stronger than its weakest uh, you know component. Um, so programming smart secure smart contract is even harder because. Um, because of several reasons. So I myself view you know, smart contract as on short programs because you have only, only one chance to make it right. Once you deploy it, you know, it's really hard, nearly impossible to you know, change it if, uh, if you find any flaw in the uh, you know, contract. And secondly, you know, the execution model of the smart contract is a little bit different. It is executed by the consensus model running on the blockchain. Um, and the third reason is that, you know, we use new uh, language, which are a little bit, uh, which are pr pretty much similar to the existing language. So often people, you know, make some assumption about the, the language which exists in JavaScript and Python, but do not exist in Solidity and, and Serpent. So that's why you know we have seen a lot of you know problem um, in our smart contracts. For example, um, you know the DAO with the reentrancy bug, um, you know Etherdice with the gas problem. Um, King of Ether Throne with the same, uh, you know, instruction. So the question that we asked before we uh, started our project is, you know, are there other bugs that we don't know in our, uh, you know, existing platform? And secondly, you know, how many smart contracts are there are vulnerable? So surprisingly, you know, the number of, of smart contracts is increasingly exponentially, uh, starting from, you know, uh, 2015. So right now we have probably 120,000 smart contracts, and we want we really want to quant quantify you know among these con smart contracts how many of them are vulnerable. <coughs> so there are several challenges. Um, first of all, you know contract codes are not always available. Uh, this is what we see when we you know, write the smart contracts. But what is eventually stored on the blockchain is a binary code which is compiled from the high-level code. And you know you can use some uh, uh, disassembler to you know uh, to translate the binary code into the bytecode, but it's still really hard for you to make, make any sense of this. And secondly, we have so many co smart contracts to an analyze. And you know if we have someone really good who can you know read the bytecode, it still you know takes them several years to uh, analyze all the 120,000 smart contracts. So what? Uh, we contribute in this project is first of all we identify new smart contract bugs, namely uh, transition ordering dependence and timestamp dependence. I will talk about them uh, uh, shortly. Um, second, we introduce Oriente, the new uh, the an analyzer for smart contracts, which is based on uh, simple execution. So Oriente can detect all the popular bugs, um, including the known and the new ones. Um, so we run Oriente with um, almost 20,000 smart contracts, and we were able to flag, you know, roughly 9,000 of them as vulnerable. Okay, uh, so what is transition ordering dependence? So I will use a, a simple smart contract to, to illustrate this problem. Um, so here we have the, uh, the puzzle solver contract, which, um, you know, allows the owner to set up some puzzle, and, you know, anyone can, um, and, and then he deposits some ether so that anyone can submit the solution for the puzzle to collect the reward. And you know, if the owner see that um, the reward is a, a little bit low and uh, the puzzle is so hard, so so he can update the reward to attract more more users. So now let's consider this scenario um, where you know some users submit the, the a solution. Which include the uh, some of the uh, send a transaction which include a solution to the uh, to the contract. So some miners they include the transaction uh, in in his block and then the submit solution is triggered. 
um, the users receive the reward if his solution is correct. So this is totally fine. But let's consider this scenario where you know um, we have the owner send a different transaction at the same time to update the reward to zero. So now the miners can you know select a set of transactions in his block, and he can freely decide which transaction to include and which transaction to ignore, and which order uh, between the transactions. So for some reasons, um, he includes the transaction which update the reward first, and then the submit solution transaction later. So now the update reward is uh, executed first, and the balance is set to zero, and then the submit solution transaction is executed. Now. Although the user submit, uh, submitted a correct solution, he still gets zero reward for his uh, solution, which is kind of unfair. So the problem um, in this transition ordering dependent, uh, dependence bug is that you know, the, the state that the, the user observes when he, when he submits the transition is different from the actual state of the smart contract when the transition is executed. Uh, and this can be a you know coincidence because you know two transactions can happen at the same time all the time, right? But it can be a malicious scenario because you know if the owner saw the targeted transaction from the victim, which includes a uh, you know correct uh, solution for the puzzle, he can you know one second later send a different uh, transaction to update the reward, and now the two transactions enter enter the race, and you know the owner has some non zero probability of winning the race. So um, that's it for the uh, generation ordering dependence. Uh, next thing is timestamp time stamp dependence. So we know that Ethereum allows the smart contract to access the block timestamp within the contract. Uh, and really, we, we have seen two main uh, use cases of this timestamp. Uh, first, people use the timestamp as a random seed to generate that random number. And secondly, they use the timestamp to, uh, um, to simulate the real time. And the problem with, with, with these two use cases is that you know, the timestamp can be mani manipulated. And the, mi the miners, they can vary the block timestamp uh, to you know, the value which bios them. So they can totally bios out the, the output of the execution to their benefit, you know, uh, either in, in both of the use cases. So, in our papers, we propose the solution for both of the uh, problems. Uh, so I think you can take a look at, at, at the paper if you're interested. Um, next, I will talk about ONT, the uh, analy analyzer for smart contracts. Uh, so here's a high-level architecture of ONT, uh, which is based on symbolic execution. So ONT takes the bytecode as an input. And then based on the bytecode, we uh, generate the control flow graph. And from the con uh, control flow graph, uh, we pass it to the um, uh, simple ex explorer, uh, which will explore all the possible parts of the program. So for every part that we can explore, uh, we, we, set, we forward it to the core analysis, which will detect whether the uh, part of the program, uh, which, which will uh, detect whether the part has some, you know, prob uh, some problem that we want to detect. And if there is, uh, we will forward the, re uh, to, uh, the result to the validator to validate whether the, uh, the result is false, uh, positive. Um, so a little bit more about symbolic execution. Um, so this is our control flow graph. Uh, we will visit every uh, single execution trace of the program. So given some input x, uh, we will you know, um, collect all the part condition, which eventually, which um, essentially uh, summarize all the execution char characteristic of that part. And for example, we want to check this property, uh, whether z is equal to x plus two. Uh, we just, you know, merge all the condition together into one big symbolic formula. And um, the rest is just to ask whether there exists any instance of the input that satisfies this formula. So in order to answer this question, uh, we send the uh, formula to the theorem prover, which is C3 in ONT. And this th theorem prover, we, we say whether there exists uh, such input or not. And if there is, uh, it will generate uh, an example for us. So what can ONT do? ONT can detect bugs in existing smart contracts, uh, as I just um, uh, described. 
And we run our entire with, you know, almost 20,000 smart contracts uh, back in May 2016. And, and we were able to detect all the popular bugs back then. Uh, this is the number of bugs um, for each category. And second, um, Oyente can, use, can be used to uh, do here? the test generation um, because symbolic execution allows us to cover all the possible parts of each program. And screen. we can, based on that okay. part, we can generate one example input that drives the smart contract uh, to that uh, execution part. Um, and Oyente is open source. We just re released it two days ago. You can uh, go to that, to, to that GitHub repo to uh, you know, clone, to fork, and uh, contribute to the project. Um, there are a lot of future work that, that we can do to uh, improve the um, you know, performance and functionality of the uh, project. Uh, so for example, we can support more opcodes. Uh, right now, we just cover you know, a large fraction of the uh, EVM opcode, but not all of them. We can also handle the loops uh, precisely, or we can combine you know, static or dynamic uh, symbolic execution to uh, reduce the rate of font positive. Um, so with that, I want to uh, conclude my presentation. Thanks. Thank you very much, Lloyd.